Hello everyone, my name is Izzy and welcome to Clear IT. Today we're going to talk about the GPU or the graphics card or the video card. Different names, but it's all the same thing. The GPU is an optional card. Not every computer needs it, not every computer has it, especially if you're using an Intel processor. Uh, but if you do need it, it is a very, very important part and you got to make sure you choose the right one. So this is an example of a graphics card, nice big card um, that is inserted inside the computer case. You can consider the GPU to be similar to the CPU. It does computations, it does math, except that it's a little bit more specialized where the CPU is the general purpose brain. The GPU is a specialized brain that does graphics really, really well and not much else. It's also much faster. Now there are two main purposes why you may need a GPU. One is because you need more monitors. So your computer, say, only supports two or three monitors, and you need more. Maybe you need four or five, or maybe you need higher resolution, and the integrated graphics that you have doesn't cut it. It's not enough. The other reason why you may need a GPU is because you actually need more computing power for your graphics, and you want to have a dedicated card a dedicated gpu that can do that for you uh, the best examples of that are people who are editing videos rendering videos gamers gamers often pretty much all the time gamers need a gpu another example of an application that is very gpu intensive is bitcoin mining miners need specialized gpus these are some of the examples of programs that are very graphic intensive and need dedicated graphics or a dedicated GPU. There are two main players when it comes to GPUs, just like by CPUs, we had Intel and we had AMD. When it comes to GPUs, you have Nvidia and AMD. Again, same AMD, except that now we're not looking at their CPUs, we're looking at their GPUs. Uh, these are the two companies that make GPUs. Now, there are many companies that sell graphics cards, but they're all gonna have either an NVIDIA or an AMD chipset. In other words, the, the brain inside the card may be made by some other company, but it's gonna have either an NVIDIA or an AMD chip in there. Let's talk about the major specs uh, when shopping for a GPU. The first thing, similar to CPU, is the clock speeds. How fast is it? And we often measure that in megahertz or gigahertz. They seem to go with the megahertz, but it's in the thousands. So it can kind of be like a gigahertz. Um, there's the base speed, and then there's the boost clock speeds, which are the speeds that are not the baseline. That's not how they're running all the time, but they can burst for short periods of time um, at higher speeds and make more calculations per second. The next factor is RAM. So GPUs have their own memory, their own dedicated memory built into or onto the GPU. Uh, maybe two gig, four gig, eight gig. There are cards that, cards that even have more than that. Um, and you need to get the card that has enough RAM for you. Now, for the most part, I think it's fair to say that in most applications, assuming everything else can do what you need to do, assuming uh, the card is powerful enough to keep up with the, the demand you're putting on the card. It probably has enough memory as well. The good cards come with a lot of RAM and so on. Um, but a little bit more important maybe than the total amount of RAM is the generation of RAM. So we have, we talked about with our RAM that there's DDR1, 2, 3, and 4. Well, with GPUs, there's GDDR RAM, graphics double data rate. And there have been a number of generations. The popular ones today are GDDR3, 5, and 6. Um, and each one essentially doubles the rate of the previous generation. Now, there is a GDDR4 and there is a GDDR2, but these are what you're going to find today. So it might be more important to focus. Depends who you ask, but it also depends what you're doing, obviously. It may be better for you to get gddr6 which will be a lot faster than gddr5 as opposed to making sure you have more ram again if you don't have enough ram you don't have enough ram you're going to have a problem with assuming 
you're within the normal range of most applications, you're probably going to have enough RAM, but get that faster speed. Another factor to take into account, which I mentioned previously, is how many monitors are supported. So you got to know, do you want two or three monitors? Do you want four, five, six, even more? Uh, so just make sure that the card that you get can support the number of monitors that you need. And finally, the monitor connection type on the ports. So for the most part today, most of them either come with HDMI or DisplayPort. Uh, you may have a mix, you know, some display ports, some HDMI, you may have mini display port, uh, you may have DVI or even VGA. So again, just something to take into account. When you're buying a car, notice the kind of ports that it has and make sure that's going to work with the monitors that you're using. Let's talk about the physical factors of the cards. Now, first thing is height. So chassis for the most part that are capable of having a GPU inserted are either going to come in low profile or full profile. So a small form factor computer can only fit a low profile GPU where a full tower will be able to fit a full profile GPU. These are two standard sizes. I'm not talking about laptops because laptops, the way you buy it is the way it is. It can come with a GPU or dedicated graphics installed, but it's built in. It's a chip on the motherboard. It can't be upgraded. It can't be replaced. So laptops or, or even the, you know, the ultra small form factors, you buy it the way it is and that's all. It's the desktops that you can upgrade and, and put in a card. Okay. The next thing to keep in mind is the slot width. How wide is the card? So while some smaller cards may take up one PCIe slot or the equivalent of one blank on a motherboard, and we'll show a picture soon, you may have other cards that are two or even three cards wide or three slots wide. In other words, they're very wide cards uh, and you got to make sure you have room in the case for such a big card. Another factor is the PCI pins. So there's different types of PCIe lanes. You may have X1, X2, X4, X8, X16, which we'll talk about when we talk about motherboards, uh, how basically how long is the slot. And GPUs are often they take up those full 16 lanes. Sometimes it can be eight. But again, just make sure you have a slot that's going to fit your card. If you have a motherboard that only has room for an X8 card and you bought a GPU with an X16 card, it's not going to fit. Power consumption. Power consumption is a big deal because GPUs uh, use a lot of power. Um, for many or even most cards, the amount of power that you're going to get from connecting it to the motherboard by putting it in the PCIe slot is not enough. They, you actually have to connect it to your power supply. So another thing to take into account, make sure you have that. Some computers, a lot of business computers, don't come with options to put in to connect peripherals. So you can't just connect your GPU to the power supply there's no connectors available. You may have to start with splitters or other things. The PSU may not have enough power, may not give, have enough watts to support your GPU. So before you get it, make sure that you have the power and you have the connectors to be able to connect your GPU to the computer. Cooling. GPUs get very hot, especially when you work them hard. And performance is directly correlated to heat. You can keep your GPUs cool, they will perform better. So cooling is very important. Now, many manufacturers make all different kinds of GPUs with two fans, with three fans, you know, smaller fans, larger fans. Again, something to keep in mind, the bigger the fans, the more fans you have, the better the heat dispersion will be and the better your performance will be. Not to mention that if it gets too hot in there, you'll have all kinds of other hardware issues as well. And finally, it would have been complete if we left this out, the appearance of the card. Uh, many people using GPUs aren't necessarily business people where they hide the computer under the desk. 
Um, it's people who have it out on display, and they're proud of their computer, and they're proud of their GPU. Um, a lot of clear chassis out there where you could see inside. And the appearance of the graphics card makes a big difference for some people. And one of the things is RGB, you know, the lights, the colors, the red, green, blue. So make sure you get one that you like. Now let's talk about some additional specs, some additional things, some additional factors that are not the most important or the basic things, but additional things to understand, to look out for, understand what you're reading when you're trying to select the correct GPU. Uh, first, the family. So when it comes to NVIDIA, there's several families. Um, two of the popular ones, the ones that I'm going to mention, are GTX and RTX. RTX being a little bit higher end than the GTX family. But probably if you're buying a GPU and it's NVIDIA, it's going to be from one of these two families. On the other side, we have AMD, uh, their RX family, and the Vega the Radeon RX, the Radeon Vega are two of their popular lines, not their only lines, uh, but the two popular families of GPUs, again, Vega being a little bit higher end than the RX. Another bit of technology nice to know about is G-Sync, or AMD calls it FreeSync. And G-Sync is technology that helps with faster refresh rates. So if your GPU supports G-Sync or FreeSync, and the monitor that you buy also supports one of those, you will have you'll have a better image, you'll have faster refresh rates. So a lot of the times, especially when you're playing intense games or whatever it is, the, the refresh rate can't keep up. The game is capable of faster refresh rates than your GPU is putting out to your monitor. And just make sure that if that's something that's important to you to get that that top the best refresh rate you can get if you have an NVIDIA make sure you have a monitor supporting G-Sync and if you have AMD make sure it supports FreeSync. The next thing is CUDA cores or stream processors. Uh, CUDA cores and stream processors are similar to the way we had in CPUs. We had multiple cores. You could have a, a CPU with two cores or four cores six or eight cores or even more well with gpu also you could have multiple cores or parallel cores and the idea of multiple cores is that you could have multiple processes occurring at the same time now unlike cpus where you only have a couple of cores gpus the number of cores is a lot more basic and you'll also have many more cores so you could have dozens of cores hundreds even thousands of cores so you could have 2,000 CUDA cores or 2,000 stream processors in a GPU. And that's not the same as having 2,000 CPU cores, which obviously is something you'll never see. Uh, but the more cores, the more CUDA cores and the more stream processors, that is the equivalent of having more cores on a CPU, which is going to equal better performance if you have an application that can utilize multiple cores. The last spec I want to mention is SLI for NVIDIA or Crossfire fire for AMD. Crossfire SLI is a technology that allows using multiple GPUs simultaneously. So maybe you're doing something and a GPU, single GPU is not enough. You want to use two GPUs or four GPUs. So SLI or Crossfire is the technology you're looking for. Again, you're going to need special cables. You're going to need other things to have to work right in order to get this done. But SLI, Crossfire, means that you can actually take two GPUs and use them as one, get the power from both. And again, you may have a card that can support two or three or more. Make sure you get what you need on that. What causes a GPU to fail? So similar to other components on the computer, the GPU can and at some point probably will fail. Number one, at the top of the list, we have heat. GPUs get really hot. If they're not cooled properly, they can get damaged. So first thing to keep in mind, especially when overclocking, heat. Make sure that thing's not overheating. Number two, age, of course. Like all other components, they get old. Things get old. They fail. ESD can happen. Electrostatic discharge or power surge, similar concept. Not that common. Uh, but again, it can happen. So if 
you're not careful and um, there's some static discharge that can damage the contacts of the card and make it unusable. And finally, dust. Again, probably if you clean it, you'll be okay. But if your case is really dusty, um, it'll affect everything, affect all parts. It'll affect heat dispersion and it can definitely do a number to your GPU. So definitely make sure your GPU stays clean. How do you install a GPU? So the first thing you need to do, open the case, and usually you'll have some kind of blanks. These are blanks. Um, you may have several, you may have one, two, depending on your computer, uh, and you'll have to take out the blank because your card's gonna be inserted into that slot. Once that's done, you're gonna take the card and you are gonna press it firmly into the PCIe slot. Now, when you press it firmly, you got to try to line it up straight. If you're going on, on an angle, you may have a little bit of a hard time. So make sure that's in all the way. Uh, many GPUs or most GPUs will actually lock in place depending on the PCIe slot and the card. They have this little notch on the back um, and it'll actually lock in place. So it'll say that you can't just pull it out. If you want to remove it, you have to release the tab and then pull straight up. That's how you get it out. If your GPU requires auxiliary power, which many of them do. The next step is to connect the power. Obviously, you're doing all this while the computer is off and unplugged. Uh, so you'll have a cable coming from your power supply, and it may be a three pin, a six pin, an eight pin, depending on what what you have. Maybe a four pin, uh, maybe more than one cable, and you will connect that to usually the back of the GPU, and you'll connect the power. Uh, and finally, you'll start up your computer and you will need to install the driver. Now, be careful with this. Don't go to third party sites. Every manufacturer makes drivers for their cards, for their GPUs, NVIDIA, AMD. So go to their site, uh, get the right package and install that. Uh, without that, obviously, you're not going to get the performance. It's going to look terrible. It's not going to do what it needs to do. So go ahead to the manufacturer's website and get the correct driver. You'll probably have to reboot when you're done. And that is necessary 100% to can't, can't get by without. This concludes our overview of the GPU. I hope it was informative. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching guys please take a moment to like subscribe and share this video and of course don't forget to comment ask questions share your share your experiences and i'll see you in the next video